Welcome back everyone. This is lecture number 15 of Onyx Financial Track. Uh, this is Ultimate Academy Steam, of course, and in this lecture we're going to be talking about inventory setup. We'll start off with the screen pricing level. So I'll bring that up first of all. So we use the screen to set up additional pricing levels other than the pricing that we've already set up in the inventory parameter screen. Once we click on add, level will be filled in automatically. Then we'll enter the name and the forename of the pricing. We'll call this one special pricing. Right, we'll paste that in the foreign name and then we will select the currency. From the drop down menu here, we'll find that uh, all the currencies that we've added on the system before will come up here and we will select the relevant one. Then the payment type. Um, we'll select either cash or credit from the drop down menu. And by the way, here, when we say cash, we mean all methods of payment, whether it's banknotes, credit card, debit card, or check, whichever. Then we have minimum limit and maximum limit. In case we activate either of them, the system will calculate the price as per the pricing that we set in the inventory parameter screen. All right, so then there is the checkbox default price. If the user activates this checkbox, then they will need to fill in a couple of fields which are default price percent from primary cost. And just a reminder of what primary cost is, it's basically the initial cost of the item plus the percentage of the salaries that are related to the manufacturing of that item. The next field you need to fill out is decimal points. Um, and then in case you want to disable this level of pricing, just check the inactive box. And of course, inactive date will come up automatically. And you can document the reason why you deactivated this pricing level uh, in the reason field. We'll move on to the next screen, which is accessories definition. All right, so the system allows the users to use the screen when they've activated the variable use items accessory in the inventory parameter screen. From this screen, we can encode the accessories. You will click on add, number will be filled in automatically, description and foreign description, just type down the description of the accessory or the name, whichever you prefer. Um, after that, if you activate the variable optional, then the system will let you select this accessory with any item of your choice in the transactions. Related with customer, this one lets you uh, link this accessory with specific items for specific customers. Next screen we have is accessories components. So we just want you guys to know that this screen is based on the previous one. So in order to use this screen, you will need to fill out the information in the accessories definition screen so you would be able to add components for these accessories. After you select the accessory from the drop down menu, you will click on add. Then of course you will start typing down the name and foreign name of the component uh, in the table that we see. Next screen is um, request types. In this screen, we add types for outgoing requests or transfer requests or both. Um, we'll click on add. The system automatically adds the number. Type down the name and the foreign name. Then we will select from the options below whether it's outgoing, transfer, or, or all, which is for both, basically. That's everything for this screen. Uh, then we have the next screen, which is incoming types. After we click on add, the number will be filled in automatically. Type the name and the foreign name. And the important thing about this screen is the checkbox connected by purchase invoice. If we activate it, then in the invoices, uh, in the invoices types, we'll link this income and type with certain invoices types. The checkbox related by restaurant system is strictly for restaurants because the nature of their incoming is different from other types of activities. Uh, then we have outgoing types, you know the drill, add, name, for name, and we have the checkbox special for assets system. This one links this outgoing type with assets, uh, with the assets module to be specific. So when we're dispatching assets with this outgoing type, the system calculates the depreciation in the assets module, of course. 
and relate it by restaurant system. Check the box if it's the line of business that you work in. That you work in. Moving on to transfer types. Click on add, fill in the name for a name, then select if this transfer type is for transfer, receiving, or all. Uh, then we have the next screen, which is, uh, let's see, stock adjustment types. Here we just add the number and the name. Then we have um, item serial description coding. You will click on add, then type in the description and foreign description for these numbers, whether it's raw material or final production or whatever. All right, so then we have evaluation standards. We talked about this one before, so we'll just move on to the next screen. Connect outgoing with accounts. We'll bring up the screen and here we determine where the value of the outgoing would reflect, on which account basically. So the first field outgoing type, you can either click on the field and hit F9 or click on this icon so the system would show you uh, a list with all the outgoing types that we've added from the outgoing types screen. Uh, then group code, in case we've added stock groups, we'll head F9 and select the group we want to link this outgoing with. And this step is optional, by the way. Um, then we have account number, either F9 or clicking on the icon uh, that's next to the field itself. Um, to basically view the chart of accounts and select the account. All right, so then we have connect incoming with accounts. Everything that we've just said about the previous screen is basically applicable to this one as well. Uh, so bear in mind, of course, that this is the opposite transaction. All right, so then we have types of assembled or disassembled. Uh, this is related to compound items. You will Click on add, name for a name, and determine where, whether it's uh, assembled or dissembled or all. All right, next screen, items, description. And in this screen, we basically just add the local name for the item. For example, and this is just off the top of my head, uh, Chevrolet vehicles are just called Chevy. So that's basically the local or the uh, common name for it. To use the screen, we will click on Add, and in the item number, we'll hit F9 and select the item. And once we've selected the item, the system will show you the name that you've added on the system already for it. Then you can add the local and the foreign name. That's all for this screen and for this lecture as well. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook and also Instagram, and we will see you again soon.